this recording. I am starting this recording. Uh, my noise gate's off. We're on your clap. All right. For a disappointing clap in three, two, one. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the sleep cast. Sorry, Austin, that was the wrong one. <laughs> How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jaren. Doing all right. How are you doing today? Uh, you know, I got to got to throw my got to throw my recruiting hat on for a, mm -hmm. for a couple of days, trying to get locked back in on on the recruiting stuff. I knew we'd have a bye week. I knew it would be a perfect opportunity. Perfect opportunity to uh, do a bit of a uh, recruiting, recruiting. That's how you pronounce words. Recruiting recap. Um, <laughs> Austin and Gangland are introducing each other in the chat right now because I guess they were feeling lonely. Uh, you should have thunderously clapped after underselling the clap. Well, Kyle doesn't, guys. You know, don't the 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 normies don't know what you, what we're talking about right now. The, we 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 cut the clap out of the show. The normies don't know what you guys are talking about. All right, recruiting, sure. Jared. Recruit, recruiting. Yeah, as you as you <laughs> mentioned, as you just mentioned, we haven't done one of these in a while here. So, uh, to get us caught up, I should have had this up here ahead of time, but you know me. Uh, <laughs> Ohio State currently ranked fourth in the twenty twenty three recruiting class with twenty hard commits currently for this class. And I think earlier we've mentioned probably about 25-ish, maybe 27 could get into this class here. Uh, I think, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's one of those things where it just depends upon who wants in. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sometimes you make room for guys. Um, I think I think we're looking, uh, that's way too high in your opinion. Um, no, I think 25 is a good number, but it, it honestly could be 23. Um, it just, again, it depends upon, depends upon who more than anything else. Um, yeah, Kyle, we have not done any recruiting. Okay. According to my notes, we haven't done a mock class since June. I know we've talked recruiting since then, but we haven't done a, a mock class. If my notes are correct, which they might not be since June. So we're way overdue on a uh, a new mock class for 2023. Um, yeah, way overdue. Way, way, way overdue. Um, anticipate portal movement. Yeah, I think Ohio State's going to need some, some love, I think some depth, some depth in the offensive line room. Um, that would be... My take problem is when you're getting debt, when you're looking for depth, you're not finding um, like raw talent or yeah, you, you know what I mean? Like you're not, you're not getting, bring me a tackle. Yeah. I just don't know if you're going to find a starter in the portal. That's the thing. No, it's, it's not like, it's not like Rutgers is going to hand you a, a tackle for the, for a year. They did hand us a center for a year though. <laughs> All right, Jerry, let's, uh, where do you want to start? Where would you want to start? Guard, thank uh, you. Uh, where would you want to start with uh, some names to look out for that Ohio State is keeping their eyes out for? You tried. Uh, the <laughs> well, before we do that, um, yeah, I know I did say it so confidently, um, but thank you for the correction. The do you do we want to do that or you want to talk about the? the current class uh, as, as, as they stand committed before we get into sort of wrapping sure. up that class. Sure. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll start here. So we have here, um, Miles Walker, offensive tackle from Connecticut. They may or may uh, not be subscribed Brock, to that Kabuto. Uh, Brock Glenn, the uh, quarterback out of uh, Memphis, Tennessee, Will Smith from Dublin, a defensive lineman. Uh, Jaden. Yeah. Uh, J hold on. Let's let's do some commentary as we go here, Kyle. Um, all, right, all right, then. Come on in. Brock, Brock, I try. That's what I'm doing. Uh, Water's warm. 
Brock, Brock Len, I think is the guy in this class. Um, not, not as highly ranked as we've seen some Ohio state quarterbacks be recently. Um, but I think it's also like a real hard sell to get a top flight quarterback in when you have the current room that you have plus Rayola sitting there in 2024. Uh, but I think Brock Len uh, is absolutely a serviceable quarterback. And I, I think, you know, in the right situation um, could be huge for Ohio State. That yeah. situation, unfortunately, would probably have to be bad news for other individuals. But yeah, petition to change his name to Glenn Brock. I'm not going to lie to you, Esquire. I have to check a lot of the times <laughs> before I speak to make sure I'm not doing that. Uh, Will Smith Jr., Kyle, just received a huge bump in the rankings. He did. He uh, he's did. now a four star. Yep. Within the, within the cusp there of the four star there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jaden Bonsu, the safety out of New Jersey. Love. I really like Bonsu. Uh, Mark Fletcher, the running back out of uh, American Heritage High yeah. School. And I, for what it's worth, I think Ohio State would add a second running back. If the guy was if 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 they absolutely found the guy they wanted, um, Mayan Junior Kabuto says that's that, that feels lofty. Big, I mean, he's he's already two twenty five. Yeah, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be out of the realm? Uh, uh, but I, but I don't I don't I don't necessarily anticipate that like the guy is going to show up. Um, I, I do know that they're expecting. I've heard rumor at least. Um, that, um, um, name escaping me. So guys, help me out. He's committed to Georgia currently. Uh, he was, uh, Hayes, Justice Hayes. I got there. I got yes. there. Uh, Justice Hayes, uh, is rumored to be visiting for the game. Um, so maybe, uh, you know, you get him on campus and you say, maybe, Maybe which game? The, the game. game, the, the game, game. Kabuto. Kabuto. Do you take him and Fletcher? Uh, yeah, absolutely. One hundred percent. Well, one hundred percent. You take that. Um, uh, so that's kind of what I'm saying when I say they're just going to take Fletcher unless the right guy showed up. And yeah. that that would that would be the right guy. More more on that uh, visit from Georgia in in a little bit. Mm hmm. Uh, another safety, Cedric Hawkins out of Cocoa, Florida. I like I like uh, Hod I like uh, Hawkins too. Uh, Bryson like Rogers, Bryson Rogers, a only a four star wide receiver down in Florida. I mean, come oh, on, come uh, on, man. I, I think <laughs> I think they're all four stars now. I I, I don't think the ranking shift. No, there's one. No, there's there's one one five star. There's one five star. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, the, the new, uh, gangland, the new, the new, um, rankings shuffle. Right. But then the composite happens and on three, I believe feeds into the composite. Um, yes. so that's, that's sort of what I'm saying. Like things got shuffled today, which screwed up some of my notes. Uh, but and then, we got, and then we got, um, Austin, um, uh, Sierra Vede out of, um, Middleton, Ohio, the, um, Sierra Veld. Sierra Veld. That's probably correct. Uh, the in, the offensive lineman out of Middleton, Ohio. Uh, Jermaine Matthews out of Cincinnati. The uh, uh, he plays cornerback. Uh, I heard a lot. I've been hearing a lot of great things from um from him. Uh, Sorry, who who did you just say? I was reading the chat. Um, Jermaine Matthews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Jermaine Matthews a lot as well. Yep. Um, and a third kid here from Ohio, um, just going all over the place here. Uh, this one from Cleveland, from Glenville High School, uh, Arvell Reese, which that's that's a high school that we're just waiting for the next big um, recruit to come from. It's a pipeline that dried up recently. It was it was huge during the Trestle era. Um, lots and lots of Glenville kids during the Trestle era. Tre why is on three anti Brandon Dennis? I don't know. 
Um, from what I try to I've, do the composite. From talking to people who have done this stuff professionally, sometimes it's literally just one guy with enough pull saying they don't like him. Yeah. For whatever reason. Yeah. Avril yeah. Reese uh, is a linebacker. Did Kyle say yes. something different? Uh, he is a linebacker. I don't. Maybe Kyle. Yeah. Accidentally he, he is misspoke. A um, all right. Next one. Here's our fourth Ohio kid. Uh, uh, here's uh, Joshua Padilla, uh, another in, inside lineman uh, from Wayne High School. Uh, talking about pipeline, Wayne High School has definitely been a pipeline for Ohio State. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's see. Uh, Kayan Lee from um, Ellen, Ellenwood, Georgia. Uh, he plays cornerback. Uh, a third third safety, Jared. That so far Ohio State has three safeties. In and this. and I don't think if they if they had their choice they wouldn't be done. Remember that Ohio State plays three safeties now. Yeah, I mean that's true. Yeah, uh, Malik Hartford out of Westchester, Ohio, um, Lakota West High School, to be more precise. Lakota, the Lakotas have been uh, huge for Ohio State in recent years as well. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. And the next um, year of the tight end, tight end here. Uh, By the way, Kabuto, Wayne... Kabuto, or not, well, they're all Kabutos right now because our Discord server is weird. Gangland says if we get Caleb Downs to visit, I'll add him to the class. You know that uh, you know that Thanksgiving visit I was telling you about with a. Uh, With uh, one Mr. Justice Hayes. I got news for you. Go on. Allegedly. Unconfirmedly. According to the rumor mill, uh, they are both visiting for that game. Ooh. And by that game, I mean the game. Now. Yeah, better win that game. What sauce, <laughs> Jared? Um... I know Alex over at Buckeye Huddle was talking about. I don't think he's. I don't think he's the originator of the rumor, but uh, he he was the one that was talking about it, and that's where I'm getting that. The correct answer, Jared, to a kind of sauce is barbecue sauce, potentially, or cane sauce. <laughs> I'm always right, fan um, of cane sauce. Where did I leave off at? Oh, tight end, tight end. The next year of the tight end, tight end, uh, Jelani Thurman. Uh, out of Georgia, uh, the fourth best tight end in this uh, recruiting class as of the uh, latest update here. Um, Calvin Simpson Hunt, the um, one of the talented corners out of Texas. Oh, Nate, what, what, what town in Texas? Uh, <laughs> I can't read because the um, uh, the resolution so poor. I can't I can't read that. So I apologize. Lies. <laughs> Waxahachie. 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 <laughs> nice. All right. And uh, Esquire knew heard... that. I just want to say that Esquire apparently knew that and almost spelled it right. <laughs> uh, we, we've, we've talked about him a number of times here. Uh, Carnell Tate, the uh, really talented wide receiver out of IMG Academy. Uh, just real quick, he is allegedly, I don't know if this has been confirmed or not, uh, visiting Tennessee. I am not worried about it. Neither should you be. And 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 if something does go wrong, uh, you know, that just gives the opportunity for Ohio State to go get another amazing wide receiver because Brian Hartline doesn't miss. But I want Tate. I hope Tate comes. Um but I'm 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 not worried that I'm not worried that he's not gonna come, I guess is what I'm trying to say. No, right. no panic. Don't yep. don't make me delete that emote. <laughs> all right. Um all right, next on our list here is Jason Moore, the defensive lineman from Maryland. Maryland has been a interesting state that Haas State has recently recruited in Got some got some really good players out of that state. And is that uh, Jason Moore could be that next one. Uh, and the uh, best player, 
the best recruit out of the state of Ohio, uh, Luke Montgomery from oh. Finley, Ohio. Uh, Luke Montgomery might be my favorite guy in this class, and this is a really good class. Um, from Finley, Ohio, gangland. By the way, um, they recruit... Um, I mean, I'd take free tickets to see Bama, Tennessee. Thank you, Esquire. Thank you. Um, I could be wrong. Was he the first commit in the class? If not, uh, the first commit in the class is no longer with the class. I can tell you that much. Um, I do remember who the first pick in the class was. Um, of course, now uh, Lockwood. Do, 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 yeah, Ty, Ty Lockwood yeah. was the first yeah. do you know, in the class. You know, yeah. The um, anybody remember who it was that committed on the um during the Rose Bowl game? He he's he's currently the uh, and hopefully it will continue to be um, the first or yeah the first um, recruit in this current class. Uh, that's right, Hawkins. So okay, I guess I guess since Lockwood's out, that makes Hawkins the does that make him the yeah. new first? That that is. He is. Is that how that works? Yes, that is how that works, Jared. All right. And um the final two are su surprised, Jared. They are uh <laughs> they are wide receivers. <laughs> right. Um first one here is uh Noah is uh, Noah Rogers from Roseville, North Carolina, which is uh, just northeast of Raleigh. Um, Good job, Kyle. The, yes, you're, you're, you guys are welcome. Uh, he already the, mentioned 24. Thurman. Kyle already mentioned Thurman. Keep going, Kyle. You're fine. Yeah, I did. Um, yeah, he's currently the as of the updated um, rankings, the 44th best player, seventh best receiver, and. Uh, on top of Ohio State's class is Brandon Enos out of American Heritage High School, number 22 player in the country. Yeah, I really like Enos. Um, I, you know, I think all of these wide receivers are great. I will say this. I'm not going to, I, I'm afraid to read that one, Austin. Uh, for just out of the, like, the possibility that I would, say something accidentally i am really not a fan if i'm going to be critical here for a second i'm really not a fan of there being two wide receivers whose names are uh rod jers and rogers because it's just going to throw me off every time it's it's really going to be very confusing for me i'm just so just for yeah, me and, personally and, yeah, and, it's, and it's and it's worse because yeah yeah, you're just one letter off and they're the same position. Yeah, <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. It'll become a right, number so, association. So, I, I mean, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm kidding. Of yeah. Course. So, so that's um, that's this recruiting class so far. Uh, so, yeah, let's talk about some potential ones for Ohio State. So where where would you like to start, Jared? So, yeah, as Kyle points out, that's 20 people. So it's not like there's a, um, a, a, a Philly Brown type deal. They could. Um, not a lot of room left uh, where I'm going to I'm going to add four additional names. I think is what I'm going to do. I'm going to add four additional names. Um, where do work out? They're asking, where does he uh, Kabuto is asking? Where do they rank na nationally current uh, currently? I would say top three, right? Fourth. Fourth. OK, they are That'll fourth. They are point four seven points. Behind Oklahoma, who has uh, oh that class two, is or, that class is falling yeah. apart. Don't worry about that. Yeah, that class is going to fall so if you, apart. If, if you are going, if you're going per average, if you're going that that class average, is going to fall apart faster than single ply toilet paper. Uh, per per uh, their average here is uh, currently second because Alabama's class is ridiculous with five five star recruits. What Bama Absolutely ridiculous? What? Bonkers. You're you're lying. All right, I have uh, two additional names that I feel pretty good about, and I have two additional names that I feel okay about. Um, 
Colin Cowherd said, oh, you should fire Venables already and go get Matt Rule. And I can't disagree too much. Um, I think Nebraska, <laughs> Colin Cowherd also said Venables was a great hire. That's how Cowherd rolls. Uh, if I were in Nebraska, if I were in Nebraska, I would have been all just like before he was fired like hey uh no offense but we all know you're gonna get fired how does nebraska sound and i you know what austin i actually have been saying that all right back to recruiting here jared what's what are we're no not, i said they should have been on the phone with them even before he got fired you mentioned you mentioned austin. four names here jared what what are those um what are those players that you think have a good chance of coming to Ohio State. Mateo Uyunglele. Um, no one has ever responded positively to how does Nebraska sound? Shit. Yeah, that's a bad that's a bad opening pitch. Uh, he, uh, yeah, he's one of the best players in the country. Uh, 10th, according to 24 seven sports proper rankings. Um, edge rusher out of California. Yes. In case you were wondering. Yes, uh, he he is the younger brother of the Clemson quarterback. Uh, no, that is, he doesn't. He doesn't play one, quarterback. That is, that is one thing this class is missing. You look at the current class here. Zero. I mean, I mean, you have um, Jason Moore as a defensive lineman there, but and Will Smith also, but you don't have any like true defensive ends in this uh, recruiting class. Uh, yeah, yeah, you, you say it correctly. They don't have any, of course, I would also argue they don't, don't currently have any true defensive tackles either. Both Moore and Smith are kind of tweeners. Yep. I would, I would ultimately think that they end up as like three tech defensive tackles. I do think that's where they end up, but yeah, they don't have, uh, any true defensive linemen, but yeah, uh, the young little is absolutely an edge rusher, 100% an edge rusher. Um, and you know who else is absolutely an edge rusher, Kyle? Who's that? Damon Wilson. This is yet another uh, highly ranked uh, five star, depending upon where you're looking. He very well could be a five star um, edge rusher. Uh, he is from Florida. He is, according to the composite, number 18 overall, the second best pass rusher and the fourth best player from the state of Florida. Um, I think Ohio State has a, a good shot here. I think Ohio State has a good shot. I uh, not I like I like the likelihood of Uyunglele coming to Ohio State more. Um, I do still like Ohio State's shot with Wilson and hopefully and I'm going to emphasize, hopefully, if maybe they don't uh, win out with Wilson, um, that uh, they can get on. A, they could uh, potentially get Keon Keeley to come to Ohio State um, for Wilson. It is us or Georgia. Don't totally rule out Bama there either. Keeley is us in Bama. That that I agree with. Actually, I think Keeley just released the top four. Um, and there were two other teams on there, but I agree with you. I do think it's between Ohio State and Bama. Um, I assume every Florida kid is super NIL, NIL promise focused. I that that I mean, it's not technically racist because being Floridian isn't a race. Or is it? Maybe it is. That's it is statist, which is different than being sadist, but it's still statist. Um, with Alabama down, we get Keeley. With Alabama down a bit, do we get Keeley? Took me a second to to read that correctly. Um, mm. no, no, Bama's. Listen, it's Nick Saban. All he's got to do is be like, yeah, we don't quite got the talent this year, which means more opportunities for you next year. 
you're either the best team in the country with no weaknesses and you absolutely want to be a part of this, or we have opportunities for you. Like you can sell that in either direction. Mm -hmm. I think OSU flounders in recruiting at the end of the year. I don't know why I just feel it. You probably feel that way because they haven't had any big wins lately. And whenever like we hit a dry spell without any like huge recruitments, like the the mood the recruiting confidence starts to slip a bit and then the second like if they get Uwe Ungalale, it's like we can't be stopped we're monsters <laughs> you know what I mean um and so it's just a little bit of perspective I think it's it's just like you hit that dry spell the confidence starts waning is what it is yep. so th those would be two dream pickups for Ohio State um I feel feel very good about Uy Um, and I feel actually pretty good if we did like Wilson or Keeley. I feel like they probably could get one of those two. I don't see getting all three. Um, and I'm slightly worried about like only walking away with Uy Angalale. That, that's sort of how I feel about all of that at the moment. Um, things are trending well with the improved defense. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's going to help a lot. Any chance the success of Mike Hall leads to more stud defensive tackle success? Yeah. And anytime you can anytime you can say, look at this defensive tackle, he's amazing. Don't you want to be amazing? And then even once he graduates, you can say, look, we have a first round defensive tackle on our resume now. You know what I mean? I mean, like, I mean look at C I mean, look at CJ Stroud. I mean, he said there one of the reasons he came to Ohio State was because of the recent quarterbacks that came through Ohio State, starting with uh with Joe Thomas Barrett. Um sure. Maybe Dwayne Haskins. Um <laughs> and Dwayne, yeah, and Dwayne Haskins, but yeah, but, but that's I mean, ultimately, that's what it comes down to. Like you can the best recruiting tool you have is reputation. The best recruiting cruel you recruiting tool you have is reputation. There's a reason why Ohio State gets whatever wide receiver they want. They can go get whatever quarterback they want. And they're struggling at getting offensive tackles in. Because Just, you can uh, put it's NIL money now, not. Not for everyone, not all the time. Not for everyone, not all the time. Yep. I, and, you know, I, I say some kids have. I want to say, stay real quick. This is not a judgment in either direction, but. Some kids have the longer term vision in mind. And by the way, being able to think long term is like a luxury, right? Because sometimes kids are coming from situations in which say, oh, we'll be fine in three to five years. And that's, you know, their needs are more immediate. Um, so it's a luxury. But I, I don't think it's a good idea to go to Jackson State and to take the money now. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's a good idea for anybody. All right, All right. Kyle, I'm adding the other, the other players, Jared. Yeah, adding two additional players. Um, these feel like flyers. I'm going to be I'm just tossing it out there. These feel like flyers. Um, I just think Ohio State needs an additional linebacker in this class. They only have one. I don't feel like that's enough. You could kind of say they have two if you want to, you know, if you want to say, well, Sonny Style should be in this class and he he should be. Um, but you know, is he more of a say? We don't know. So, but I do think Ohio State needs another linebacker in this class. They were like this close with Tackett Curtis. And I think that I actually I know that they're continuing to recruit Tackett Curtis. And I think the possibility of getting a flip there is not ridiculous. Um, but mostly what I'm saying by putting Tackett Curtis into this class is they really need another linebacker. Because they really need another linebacker. Uh, and then to wrap it up, and again, I'll say this because 
I think they really, really need like another dedicated, you know, offensive lineman. Um, We, you know, I, I think Luke Montgomery is an offensive tackle. And I do think Miles Walker is an offensive tackle, but I, I think what you can get out of someone like Luke Burgess is guy who is also who is like definitively a tackle. He is a, he is a tackle. He's more he's a little bit more of a project player, um, but I, I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. Um, he's six seven and a half, two hundred and eighty five pounds. He's out of New Palestine, Indiana. He's currently committed to Louisville. I'm thinking if Ohio State wanted to make this move, they could. Um, and I just, again, I feel like they need like a, they need another guy in this class who is like a capital T, no confusion tackle. And I, I think that's what Luke Burgess is. And also it might not be a bad idea to, uh, to, to pick up another or to pick up a new Palestine, Indiana uh, offensive lineman. For a specific reason that we'll we'll get to in a second. All right. Uh, anybody else for the twenty twenty three class that you wanted to talk about? Uh not not without going down a wormhole of a bunch of names that I'm just tossing out there. So you know, because I because we always like to pick on Michigan here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what the 2023 class jared you look at the top really really look at the top 50 here jared because i don't think michigan would go it after anybody passed the top 50 in the state of ohio michigan has zero zero recruits from the state of ohio and you look it, the, hasn't you that look, been harbaugh's mo for most of the I'm, time i'm about to i'm about to i'm about to look back in the previous years here in a second here but in the top 10 here ohio state has seven of the top 10 two two uh, two went to um going to notre dame and uh one going to northwestern yeah, he, maybe he wants to be a maybe he wants to be a journalist. Could be better. Uh, a seven, I think, is. I mean, no, only. I, I, I listen without actually even knowing for a moment, um, what who specifically Kyle's talking about. Sometimes you don't want them. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't think you necessarily want to get uh 10 out of 10 in in the state of Ohio. Mm -hmm. All right, look in the 2022 class, Jared. Nothing nothing from Michigan. Michigan has largely ignored the state of Ohio in the under 2021, Harbaugh. the 2021 Michigan got one person from the state of Ohio, um Rod Moore from Clayton, Ohio, 17th best in, or the 17th in the state of Ohio and 511th nationally. Yeah. Um, they definitely tried, failed, uh, definitely tried to, to get Luke Montgomery. And I think they're still battling for the uh, younger Montgomery, who is a quarterback. Is that 2025 class, I believe. Um, God, their class is fucking horrendous. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Kyle, let's they're, they're talk. Best, they're best. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, uh, let's, let's talk 2024 now. Uh, we haven't talked recruiting in depth in a while. Um, so I just want to, we're not going to do like a full, a full mock class. We're just going to, we're going to hit some names to, to keep a, an ear out for, I think is just what we want to do here. Just sort of a, because we'll, 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 we'll get into recruiting again more heavily, like in December. So just, just want to keep some names fresh on everyone's mind here. Sure. Kyle, I'll say this. Uh, well, okay. Well, first let's Dylan Rayola, 
committed to this class. He is one, one, one. <laughs> number one best player in the country, number one quarterback in the country, number one player from the state of Arizona in the country. In the state of Arizona in the country. Yes, I said yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, he's he's decent. Of all he's the Arizonas. Decent. Yeah. He's a one. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he I mean, yeah, he is. And that's um almost impossible to accomplish. Almost impossible. He is he ranks a perfect one in the 24 sports composite. He is only one of eight players since 2000 to do that. Yeah. Yes, he is. So, yeah, off to a good start. Only Kyle, only one player for 2024 so far. But the average is great. The per <laughs> player average is fantastic. It can't. Yeah, you can't beat that. Jared, how many of those uh, perfect score players have they landed? Uh, has two. Ohio State landed um, two, one? They've technically recruited two. <laughs> uh, wait, are we count? Are we? Are we count? Are you? Are we counting Dylan? Yes. So two. Yep. This is this. Dylan would be number two. Yeah, no, Fields was like a 9998, if I recall correctly. He was very so, close. Yeah, I mean, there, there was that. So, um, so if I'm looking here, uh, Julian Fleming, 9979, Jack Sawyer, 9980, JT Tui Malau, 9989, Ted Ginn Jr., 9992, Terrell Pryor, 9997, Quinn Ewers, and Dylan, one. All right. So, yeah, off to a great start uh, in quant in quality, if not quantity. Um, so let's, uh, let's take a look around the state of Ohio real quick. Um, I actually really like Ohio states. And by the Ohio states, I mean the state of Ohio's uh, class this year. I think there's some really talented players in here. Um, we can start, Kyle. We're going back to Glenville. I know us, all of us uh, oldies love the return of the Glenville pipeline for cornerback Bryce West. Hey, it's I've heard that name before. Yeah, we've talked about him before. Bryce West, um, cornerback. Um, he's uh, currently ranked 110th in the country and is inside the top 10 for cornerbacks in the country. Uh, currently the number 10 or the number two player in the state of Ohio. But if you go by the composite, he is a lot higher than that. He sure is. 37th nationally, top five corner, and the number one in the state of Ohio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, much, much different story there. I mean, I, I guess I shouldn't say much different, but it, it, it is it is significant. From 110 to 37, about... from 110 to 37 is pretty significant. Yeah. Uh, offensive tackle, Kyle, um, from Lakewood, Ohio, uh, St. Edward specifically. I almost said St. Edwards. That's a different school. This is St. Edward. Uh, ben Roebuck, um, offensive tackle. Um, I think maybe coming in a bit underranked at the moment. They have him as the 17th best tackle uh, in the country. I, I think that that is the way Ohio State has been recruiting tackles lately, totally in their wheelhouse. Um, but I, I think he's much better than that, in my opinion. Uh, so uh, Ben Roebuck, another good player from the state who I uh, definitely have an eye on. I, I don't even want to. Oh, OK, you weren't responding to me. Uh, Aaron Scott uh, from Springfield, Ohio. Um, he's a corner um, just outside the top 200. Uh, for the for the 24 sports proper ranking, but uh, composite ranking does have him significantly higher at 126, 126. Kyle, uh, we have a familiar last name next in the uh, Ohio category. I'll, I'll let you go here. Are you talking about Stover, Mr. Stover? I am talking yep. about Stover. Garrett Stover? Yeah. Garrett Stover. 
I, I, yeah, I, another, 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 another tight end coming, another tight end coming in here. Maybe, uh, no, probably not. He's not as tall. Um, at least according to what we have in the, in the, on the websites so far that that could have changed. Um, he, he's might be like a little bit older now, a little bit bigger now. I don't know. Um, but, uh, currently listed at like six two two hundred according to 24 seven sports. I have no idea. Um, again, if that is still accurate or not. Um, so, but again, got good bloodline here. He's marked as an athlete on, on those sites as well. Um, but again, uh, we're talking top 10 in the state of Ohio, uh, top 250 in the country. And of course he's a, you know, he's a legacy. Oh, by the way, uh, I believe it's, a, I believe, I believe they're cousins, cousins. They're not brothers. They're cousins. Ah, uh, round right. out the state of Ohio with, uh, another Kyle, Kyle. Another Glenville kid. When it rains, it pours, my man. When it rains, it pours. Uh, from Glenville, uh, he's marked as an athlete. Uh, Demarion Witten. Um, again, another another excellent. He's marked as an athlete. 6'4", 215. So oh, I say I would assume looking at him, you know, at that sort of like defensive end, then- tight end, uh, typical size there. So you know, maybe they don't know yet, like what side of the ball they want him on. So, but I, I think, you know, he's, he's big and he's fast and he's from Glenville. That's good enough for me. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have two more names just to throw out there real quick from sure. the state of Ohio. Um, Devonte Armstrong and Deontay Armstrong, Devonte Armstrong, uh, Deontay Armstrong. I think I'm getting those correct. They must be twins. You know, you would assume so. Uh, they go to the same high school. They have the same last name. Um, they're, they're, I'll say this. They're not identical. I have pictures. But yeah, they both go to uh, St. Edward in Lakewood, Ohio. Kyle, did we just talk about Lakewood, Ohio? I believe we did. We did. Yeah. No rankings on these guys yet, but. You know, I just kind of like the idea of Ohio State picking up like half of its offensive line recruiting class from one high school. So I just thought it was worth mentioning. That's it. Um, they they have the they have the right size. Uh, they play for a really good team in uh, for for St. Edward and Ohio State already has a uh, open communication with the coaches and one of their teammates. So I, I think. Keep an eye, keep an eye, keep an eye. They have a cousin named Leg Strong. Oh. Why Sun Card? Or excuse me, Sun Buto. <laughs> I like that you kept the 19. I do like that you kept the 19 Sun Card. <laughs> All right. Any other names here, Jared? Uh, we, we talked for over 40 minutes about recruiting here. Yes. Well, I, I wanted to. I want to do some uh, outside the state of Ohio names for 2024. Come on now, Kyle. All right. All right. Jeremiah Let's Smith. Jeremiah Smith. But he, he, he must be a wide receiver. He is. Uh, he is ranked, uh, according to the composite, uh, number 10 in the entire country. Which, by the way, only puts him fifth in the state of Florida. Those early recruiting rankings love those Florida kids, and I'll leave it at that. Um, Another wide receiver, Mylon Graham. Uh, He is from New Haven, Indiana. Uh, He is uh, just inside the top 100 overall in the country. Uh, Pretty decent four star guy. Um, And Kyle, do you you remember when I asked you to keep keep in your mind uh, playing offensive line while in New Palestine, Indiana? Mm -hmm. Yes. You remember? Yeah. Ian Moore. He's an interior offensive lineman, 2024 class, uh, just inside the top 100 for uh, both 24 seven sports and the 24 seven sports composite ranking. Now I'm done. Awesome. All right. So we're going to, we're going to answer some questions here and uh, what better way than answer some over unders from Austin. Okay, we're oh we're doing recruiting over unders. 
<laughs> we are. Recruiting special, he says. Uh, total commits for the 2023 class over under 22 and a half. Over. 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 Yeah, over. Uh, no, no. We're not, we're not going to the old SEC where they had that many. Uh, sun card. Uh, amount of following players who will end up declaring after only three years in the Ohio State program. Like Ennis, Rogers, Tate, Rogers, and Fletcher. And he has one and a half of those uh, players. Declaring after only three years of those fl- of those players. So it's four wide receivers plus the running back. I'll say I'll say over. I'll say over after three years. Specifically in the Ohio State program, he says. I'll say over. Yeah, it's Listen. it's just hard because there's so many wide receivers in the room. So uh, I'll say over as well, but it's it's tough. All right. Total amount of 2024 players Ohio State will have in the class by kickoff of the national championship game this season at five and a half. I'm going to say over. I'll say, say over. Okay. I'm going to say under. Amount of four or five star Ohio State will have committed for the 2024 class by the by this time they by the time they sign. All right, so, amount of four or five stars Ohio State will have committed for the 2024 class by the time they sign, 19 and a half. Currently, Ohio State has 18. 18, yeah, but he, I'm sorry, 19 has exact has 19 four and five stars. For the 2023 class, he's asking about the 2024 class. He is, yes. Uh, I'm gonna go uh, over just because Ohio State doesn't typically have a ton of three stars. So it really kind of depends upon the size of the class, which I think they should have room to have a slightly larger class this year or next year, rather. Um, So I'm going to go over. I also think that they had a lot of issues recruiting some top flight defensive talent in the 2023 class, and that's not going to be an issue in the 2024 class. Yeah, I'll I'll say over as well. Just um, recency with Ohio State's classes. Uh, Uh, Austin said that they average 19 four slash five stars a year since 2019. Um, so yeah, like I said, it kind of, I, I, that's why I based it largely on the size of the class. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Uh, amount of corner signed in the 2023 class. He has it at three and a half. Uh, that's, I mean, it's, it's perfect because I think we were talking about it a bit with the running backs where it was just like, they like who they have, but if it's the right guy, they'll add a fourth. Mm-hmm. I think it's the same thing with the corners. I think they, I think if they, if they stood pat there, they'd be fine. And I, they're not going to add anyone just to add them. But like if the John Johnson wants to come back into the class, which I, I don't think he will. Uh, but if he wanted to, they'd say, hell yeah, come on back brother. And they'd, you know, they'd play. Um, and the, then, then you have over, um, but I'm going to go under. Yeah, I'm going, under he's too. going to, he's going to Florida. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm I'm going to say under amount of players who will start as a true freshman on either side of the ball in 2023 at one and a half. And I'm going to say under for that one. It's, it's hard for a true freshman to be starting. If they start for one game, does that count? Austin. I don't, I don't yeah, I don't I'll think say that. no. So like a uh, like a non a four game minimum. So like but like a non injury assisted like actually name the starter starter is is that a yeah. fair way of saying it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah no. He said true. I th- I think he said true in the question. Okay. Not right. necessarily. Uh, 
Yeah. So under. okay. Injuries could influence it, but eh. So we're just saying starts at least four games. In the defense, there should be a fair amount of turnover in the secondary with the safeties, um, Cam Brown. And they're bringing in a lot of really talented safeties. But they also have like a good number of talented safeties. But there will be, like I said, there'll be a lot of turnover. If it happens on the defense, it'll happen with the safeties, I think. Um, biggest chance is corner, in your opinion. I really like the second year corners. Um, I really like the second year corners. Mm-hmm. Um, on All the right, offensive and- side, I don't see any opportunity to start next year. Um, yeah. theoretically you could say offensive line, but that's so rare that that happens. Uh, beat you to it. Sun card. Uh, so man, I'm going to go under, I'm going to go under. Yep. All right. And the last one he asked, All, your house seat, Austin, the house seat, uh, true drinking. freshman starting offensive lineman is incredibly rare. If it was half, do you take the over? I, don't think so. No, I don't think so. I don't think we're pulling any guys that are ready to go year one. Luke Montgomery, in theory, I, I think is as able as most. I, I think he'd be ready to go. Um, sorry, Kyle. Go ahead. Uh, Ohio State's class ranking finish finishing for 2023 at two and a half. So they either finish first or second. So who's, who's ahead of them right now, Georgia. Well, and what's that? Michael Jordan started as a true freshman. Yeah. But that's one. Yeah. Alabama, Georgia, and Oklahoma are ahead of Ohio state. And yes, I think, with one commit, Ohio State will be in front of um, Oklahoma, but they are not getting. They're not getting first. But to jump Georgia here, Ohio State would need to get like two of those four players. Jared, Jared said to be in front of them. So I'm going to. I'm going to say be, under. no. I'm going to say under. That that wouldn't be. I don't think that to get two of to get the two best players that I mentioned at the defensive end, they would have to do that. And then, and then on top of that, they'd absolutely need to steal downs from Georgia because now, now you're getting it from from both angles, right? Um, I don't, I don't really think you need all of that because if you look at the average, Georgia's you know, going to keep the, adding players. If you look too. at the average rankings here. Hussey adds one, even, even if it's that, even if it, um, even if it's, oh, I'm drawing a blank on. On the name that you just said, even even if it's um, Caleb Downs, um, either one, Caleb or or Damon Wilson. I just say Damon Wilson. Right. You add him there. It that could potentially put them in in the uh, second uh, in second place. It, Georgia's going to keep adding cool. players too, though. But yes, Georgia won't be adding players. So I, I would go with the under here. I'm going to go yeah worse. However, okay. we're saying saying it worse all right uh so speaking of recruiting here buckeye esquire asks a, a question here is clark phillips the biggest would be super helpful for this team right now recruiting this like this team right now yes because yes. i was definitely thinking that last year um but i think one of the things we've had proven to us is that it wasn't the players <laughs> um yeah I still I sometimes I when I watch when I watch Bama, I I can't help it watching Jordan Battle and uh two oh two oh. I know two oh two oh was technically a transfer battle, uh not a recruiting battle, but yeah. Uh yeah, Jordan Battle as as Suncard says. Yeah, so I I think Jordan Battle, uh, Clark Phillips, I I think absolutely as well. 
Uh, Lathan Ransom, not Ransom. We have Lathan. Uh, La uh, Lathan. Lathan's his last name. I can't think of. Yeah, the offensive tackle who went to Oklahoma. I've already. I'm, I'm blanking on his name. If anyone wants to help me, I'd appreciate it. Um, J.C. Latham. That's right. J.C. Latham. Yeah, it's all right. Yes. So is he? See, that was the problem. We just have one too many guys who go by initials on the team. And so Latham was just like, nah, I'm out. Um, so th those are some of the recent names I think of a lot. When. Like I sometimes it's very rare that I'll see a guy Ohio State recruited on a different team and just go. If only. If only. Uh, but I, I think I'm going to say Jordan Battle. Remember, people thought he'd go to Virginia. You're talking about Smith. But yeah, I, but I mean, practically. Oh. Latham thought he'd go to Virginia. He was like Ohio. He was like Ohio State. And absolutely was going to Ohio State right up until the point where he committed to Bama instead. Mm hmm. All right, I think I think we'll call that an episode here, Jared. Um, we got you all covered. Twenty twenty three. Some names for twenty twenty four here. Um, but yeah, I think I think that should be up, wrap it up. You got anything else? Anything else, Jared? Before we before we call it a night? Uh, yeah. Uh, we're we're on Buckeye Huddle now. Um, so everyone check out buckeyehuddle.com. Um check out our TikTok pages and our Twitter pages and our Instagram pages. And uh, please be, per be words are hard. Please be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube. That would be greatly appreciated. Um, I know that um, we're, we're on Buckeye huddle now. So we're on their YouTube page, which is fantastic. And we are also on, um, we, we get a lot of downloads just of the audio version even if you don't necessarily plan on watching this on YouTube, we'd still really appreciate a uh, subscribe over on YouTube. And if you're already watching this on YouTube, I would greatly appreciate you dropping um, a like and a comment, even if it's just to say hi. And uh, Kyle, I think that's all the the plug I want to do. Do you have anything? Hi, Austin. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, to be honest, I... I didn't uh, just looking for some uh, well, I was hoping to see some football, but you know, um, uh, never plan, uh, never have your friends or yourself plan weddings in the fall, Jared. Yeah. You can't really control <laughs> what your friends do, but you know, be, be the change you want, be the change you want to see. Of course. Yes. But some really good, some really good games here. So uh, check us out on, uh, Friday's episode, we're going to cover some games here uh, for this weekend. Yeah, some some top um, some top games here, and we'll definitely see some movement when we when we uh, catch up um, early next week. Yeah, you should absolutely listen to our Friday episode. It's going to be fun. So yeah, with all of uh, oh, I almost just went like right into the thing and didn't. Tonight's ending music will be brought to you by a uh, a punk band from the Columbus area, uh, sort of like a folk punk band, I would say is a better way of describing them. Uh, they are called Two Cal Garage. That is Two Cal Garage. Um, so with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Two Cal Garage. <laughs>